What is PIO? RP2040 is a microcontroller chip designed by Raspberry Pi. Already built into many microcontroller boards, like Raspberry Pi Pico, RP2040 features standard peripheral options like I2C and SPI. As long as low-level devices, such as LCD displays, have I2C or SPI interfaces, you can use standard MicroPython libraries to control them. But what about hardware that doesn't have I2C or SPI protocols? Or what if your project requires more I.O. channels? That's why RP2040 has a unique ability called Programmable Input Output, or PIO for short. When programming in MicroPython, you don't have to worry about everything the code is doing. Take the humble command print hello world. When writing in MicroPython, we don't have to worry about where the letters are stored, the format it's sent in, or even how long the execution takes. All of that is handled in the background. When using PIO, you're dealing with code at a much lower level, which means exerting much more control over these factors. How does this work? On typical MicroPython devices, controlling non-standard hardware usually requires a process called bit banging. This is a process whereby your code rapidly turns pins on and off in a particular order to transmit data. Think of it as Morse code, where you send a series of dots and dashes in a particular order to communicate a message. The timing of the dots and dashes is essential so that the person who is receiving the message can understand you, just like the timing and speed of bit banging is essential so that the hardware can understand the instructions. There are downsides to bit banging, the main one being that the process is slow. Because the processor has to concentrate fully on bit banging to get the right timing, it's not able to get on with any other work, like adding up numbers or printing out text. This is where PIO comes in. It allows you to carry out this bit banging process without drawing resources from the main processor. Along with the main Cortex M0 Plus processing cores, RP2040 has two PIO blocks, each having four state machines. These state machines are really paired back processing cores that each have a set of nine instructions. This may not seem like many, but they actually allow for a wide range of behavior and location changes for the data. They are written in a special language for the PIO system on RP2040 that can then be embedded in a MicroPython program on the main processor. Within these state machines are two first in, first out, or FIFO pipes, and these are used to link the state machine to everything else on the chip. This allows for the orderly processing of data and operates as a queue. The first bit of data to go in is the first bit of data to be pulled by the state machine, and so on. To help understand the benefits of PIO, let's take a common example. Addressable LEDs, commonly known as NeoPixels. NeoPixels are a great fit for PIO for two reasons. First, the protocol that controls NeoPixels signals data by using the widths of pulses to represent ones and zeros, and for this reason has to be bit banked. It is also very timing dependent, requiring the processor's full concentration. Secondly, NeoPixels brightness levels are not gamma corrected. Here, gamma correction would allow for more gradual changes in brightness, but because they are not gamma corrected, the difference between the individual brightness levels can be quite stark when used on other processors. But having PIO means that we can dedicate a state machine to implement the control protocol, which is what we need to communicate with the LEDs and control timing. That then leaves one of our main processing cores free to control the level of brightness in a way that gives us more steps of brightness. That then leaves a whole processing core free to manipulate other data like display patterns. PIO is a complex process, but it gives a much deeper level of control to do things like retro game emulation, control robot arms, and even display HD video. 
we've only given a very brief overview of the ideas behind PIO, but we have also put together more resources for you to learn more, and even write your own PIO programs to control addressable LED lights. To find these and much more about RP2040 and Raspberry Pi Pico, visit rptl.io slash rp2040 get started.